Hey guys, this is Leron from Seek the Stars and welcome back to my channel. So, it's been a while since I posted anything and I guess for you guys, as I've always mentioned in my videos, it's not a surprise anymore that I just drop off the map sometimes. But yeah, it's been two months. The last video I posted was the Okitan video, which is also a Fate Grand Order fan art. And yeah. <laughs> I really didn't do much until this one. So, as a marker, time marker of sorts, it's currently August 27, 2020. And the country that I live in, here in the Philippines, is still currently under a lockdown slash quarantine measures for the past five months and probably more into the future, mainly because of the pandemic that's currently going on. And we, there's not much to talk about, nothing much has really changed in those past 5 months or even in the 2 months that uh, I didn't really post any videos. So I guess just let me know in the comments down below how you guys are doing, if anything major has changed for you guys. Um, yeah, just let me know if you're doing okay, if you're keeping safe, hopefully sanitized from the world what's out there right now and yeah still taking precautions for the pandemic anyway that with that i guess i'll guess talk about that later if i have extra time which i probably do this is like a 43 minute video and i'm like two minutes in <laughs> so the the thing that you're watching right now is fan art for fate can order and this is actually a project that was made for a fanzine. So it is a collaborative fanzine uh, that is summer themed and this was organized by Project Asphodel and it was just like summer servants. The theme was like them in the band having a concert for summer and the thing you had to do for the project was this piece and then some merchandise. So I did light sticks and a water bottle design as well. And yeah, my my personal theme was I wanted to draw like male summer servants. So I do know that since summer you see, like that, but sorry, since Serva Fest in NA and all of that, every summer there's a male costume, but there aren't any actual male servants. And that's probably both a good and a bad thing. I mean, as long as I have that character, I, have, I can just like keep the costume in the inventory. I mean, you gotcha them eventually depends on the character. So, male, having no male summer servants is actually a good thing, but either way, <laughs> I just wanted to draw some male servants since, you know, they need to get some love too. And us bundles, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, so I drew Karna, uh, Arthur, Pendragon, Emia, Archer, and Kuhulin Lancer. All in summary vibe outfits. So my main idea going for them was I wanted them to look like kind of perform not really performative but like idol idly. So I took inspiration from J pop idols and K pop idol outfits. Like I really searched <laughs> my search history is now tainted with K pop idols, but I did research on how their stage outfits look like and Especially like for summery looking ones, what they would wear, and I talked a little bit of bits and pieces of ideas from that. So I didn't really want to go the full K-pop vibe because you know how K-pop has like this very specific look in terms of like their outfits. Um, I wanted to go a bit more still casual and fun and whimsical looking. So essentially, what I did was I took elements from their normal outfits. So for example, you're watching Karna right now. Um, you still see his color, he's, he still has the earring and all of that. And he still has like the black bodysuit slash his skin. And I just altered it a little bit to make it look more lighter, a bit airier, slapped a white t-shirt on him and he looks a bit more summery now. Yeah, I mean, that's essentially what I did. So I'll, I'll, I guess I'll talk about each guy as we go through them. 
And that's also why the video is going to be pretty long. Because I didn't really want to speed up the video too much. As you can see the, the, the progression of the art. And not to mention there are four characters that I did pretty much fully. So Karina, Arthur, Emmy, uh, Ku are all in different layers. So if I remove Karina from the picture, like Arthur is not going to get cut off and miss an arm or something like that. So they're all fully rendered, so that's also why it took some time. Not to mention I did backgrounds, which as you know is not my strong point. And it did take some time, but I did like how it turned out in the end. And color correction also took some time. And yeah. So, Karna. <laughs> I oh well, yeah, the main idea for Karna actually was like more of a wet not really wet t-shirt, but he's like wearing a t-shirt and his he looks like super fresh looking and I wanted to put like a main eye-catching element to them or like a bright element to each character and I didn't really solidify this idea until I started doing the colors because um, at first my idea was just like, hey, put these guys in a band and like this have them perform or look, make them look like they're in a band. Um, the the composition that I did for this job is just, just to make them look like they're taking a selfie, like pre-show, and it's supposed to be either on stage or backstage ish. And that is the idea I was writing with. And then I was informed that apparently they needed to have like a band name. So I took like maybe a day or two, like this trying to solidify what theme I was gonna end up with and in the end I did decide that like, going for like a have a bright eye-catching thing per character so um, the band's name is officially Neon Mirage <laughs> and the idea actually came from because they had a bright element per character <laughs> so I gave Karina so they assigned all colors so I'm a little excited about this project and all so I'm gonna talk a little bit all over the place but the the color I sent Karina initially was actually teal, which is supposed to be to match his eyes. Eventually, I switched that over to like a golden color, orangey golden color. I gave Arthur Pentagon or Arthur like blue because he's the knight of blue and silver, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, blue because that's what he mainly wears. Um, Emia got red. And that's gonna be a bit of a nod to something when I talk about Anya later. And then Ku got Green, which I'll also talk about later. So, yeah, so they suddenly became neon. <laughs> or they suddenly had cards assigned to them. And I just rendered that. So I really wanted to give them like this K pop y, not really K pop, J pop vibe, I guess. I don't know what vibe they're giving off. Actually, Arthur probably would be the most. I believe looking one out of all of them because Karina looks pretty casual, Arthur looks pretty idly, uh, Emmy uh, actually looks more like the summer character out of all of them, and Ku, Ku just looks like cool band dude. Yeah, so <laughs> I guess they're not super cohesive in terms of their outfits, but it's all light and summery, so yeah. So I did mention that I also did like merch for this project and it's not real merch, it's just like fake merch, pretend merch, like merch for the band. I actually kind of went all out and also did the logo for them and eh, I might, I don't know, I don't know what to do with that logo now but um, the designing and gendering for those are not in this video because it's, it's gonna be way too long. I also decided not to record it anymore so if you want to see all of this, like the piece and the merch, check in the description and also I guess I'll put a comment down below with a link going out to where you can view the scene. I highly encourage you to do since a lot of artists worked on this and it was really a really fun project. Not to mention this was supposed to be time, or it's actually out now, but this was time to release somewhere around summer. So, as I was drawing this entire picture, I was also attempting to farm on NA 
sorry, my fast. <laughs> so it was it really felt like, like I was really um I guess in character because I was grinding for dojins in in the game and also in real life I, I was grinding away to to finish this job in time. Which also turns out to be a fan scene, which also I guess is a doujin, you know, like fan works doujin in a book format, I guess. <laughs> that 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 event like seriously hit so close to me that that time. <laughs> I guess um I can't really say much about it. Since there are three, uh, so on there's only been three summers so far, but they kind of enjoyed. Serve a fest the most, uh, mainly because I have gone to cons, so I I know the vibe and the atmosphere of it, and I'm also an artist, so I do know the crunch of producing creative breaks under a deadline, and the entire mechanic of serve a fest is actually pretty fun. Like the looping was interesting. Uh, I guess the raids was the only part I didn't really enjoy about serve a fest, uh, the the BB raids. Other than that, I actually did enjoy that event. So actually, tell me how you're a server fest fan. I pulled, like, I, I threw a 30 and I got Ushi, which is good. Like, she was my target. I was saying, like, if I get the Archer, I'd be pretty happy because I, I do like the Archer class in general. Um, but Ushi was more or less my target, so I rolled a bit and I did get Ushi. So yay. Um... <laughs> Uh, so let me know how your server fest went, or yeah, how your server fest went. Did you get the character you were pulling for? Whether it was Georger or or BB, uh, let me know if you got them. I guess, and if you didn't get them, well, they're still next year. <laughs> so to be honest, for me, I have no width or capacity to pull for next year because it's gonna be the casino event next year and. I am going to get Okitan. I will. I'm gonna save up so much for Okitan. <laughs> or not Okitan, Okitaj. Actually, I keep on getting them mixed up. Okita Summer. And not to mention, I'll be pulling a little bit in between that. So, right now, my current target is to pull for Weaver in the Zero region. And then I'll get. I'll, I'll pull for Karna during the Yuka Keshta. The, the LB4, um, actually, no, wait. Yeah, yeah, actually. Uh, yeah, LB4. I'll be pulling for Karina during LB4. And then, in between that, I remember there was some for somebody else in between that. Let me check. Actually, no, that's right. So it, was gonna, it was gonna be a waiver, and then Karina, and then Akita Summer, and then. It's a good chance, and I'm pretty sure I will. I will be pulling for Astolfo Saber as well. And then the year after that, <laughs> Summer 5, um, hmm. I, I'm pulling for Tomoe for sure. Whether I'm pulling for Voyager or not before that, um, I'm pretty sure I'd have enough SQ2. I probably will. <laughs> But it's not locked in yet. We'll see if I'll pull for Voyager or not. Which also may or may not have spoiled NA only players. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I should have put a warning. Oh. This drawing, I guess, and enough about my pulling schedule. <laughs> um, I I struggled a little bit with Karna at, at the start because I I didn't draw for two months, and I only drew Emiya I think a month or a couple of less, less than a month before Okitaj. So I guess more or less it's been three months since I did any digital works, and I was you know um. 
trying to find my feet a little bit. Like I knew the techniques more or less, but I was trying to get the the flow back. So by the time I got to Arthur, it was a bit faster now because I knew what what kind of brush strokes and stuff that I like doing or how to do certain effects and stuff like that. By the time I got to Ku, to Emmy and Ku, I was already pretty uh, warmed up to it, so they went even faster. Which is nice. I mean, I actually finished this pretty early. I, I did set a really tight, not really tight, I set a really strict schedule on myself that by the time this date draws around, I should only be like doing color corrections left because I need to give myself like one week to do the logo and the merch designs and I actually finished on time, which is great. <laughs> I guess one thing now that I'm watching the playback of my recordings and stuff like that, I could still stand to do like maybe harsher or not really harsher, I could still do more solid uh, highlights and lighting. Because right now it still feels a little bit blown out or too soft. So I could do I could stand to do more solid highlights. The shadows, I guess, I should really try starting off deeper with deeper colors and not like this mid-tone-ish. Um, and I guess I could work on that a lot more as well. But actually I'm slowly starting to like quite a bit where I'm headed with my techniques. Like it's not perfect, obviously. Uh, anatomy, all of that. Line art also could use a lot of work, but I'm actually quite liking where I'm headed with my digital art. It's it's getting closer to what I want to be able to achieve with it. I also save myself a lot of pain, because right now, uh, you're watching me design or draw a design on that water bottle. At that point in time, I only decided to work on like light sticks. And I didn't know what my second piece of merch would be because you're required to do two pieces of merch. So I didn't know what to do. And I ended up actually making the water bottle, which is actually nice because it's summer, hydration, keep yourself hydrated. So I was like slightly saving my own butt since I had a partial back design to it already. So I only needed to design the front. And that was easy. Like I'm used to designing. Um, graphic design at least, but hey, it, it, it helped out in the end. So now we're working on Emilia. So Emilia, Emilia's look, I gave him a very wetsuit vibe to it. Uh, I wanted to keep a lot of the elements from his normal outfit, so like the red uh, collar and tassels and like the... I don't really know what to call his sleeves thing. Jacket, vest. It's probably a vest. Yeah, this is red vest thing. I wanted to keep that idea a little bit. So, yeah. You'll see. And actually, I did research like what wetsuits look like just to be able to see how men's wetsuits typically look. That still looks pretty sporty and it's something you can wear around without having the need to go into the water and stuff like that. So admittedly, him and Ku probably I would I'd say this for myself, I guess, or just for me. I'd say he, they're the ones that look the most coolest, I I guess. Ku looks just cool in general, because um it's a certain reference to something else. And the uh I don't know, he just looks cool. <laughs> it's probably the sunglasses. Which also hilariously again, I'll mention it now. And the uh gets a summer costume in in summer five. So it was he has glasses there. It wasn't sunglasses, but it was funny that I did end up also drawing sunglasses for Emia or jacket glasses in general. Though all of the summer five costumes did get glasses, but still it was funny that it ended up that way. Like I had no idea that's coming. I had no idea Emmy was get Emmy was getting a costume. Actually, that's cool. Very casual. Um, 
Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it was funny because like um, when I was designing this outfit for Enya, I wanted him to look like you know kind of slightly trendy, slightly fashionable, like cool dude. He, like, he's the cool stoic dude of the group, and so I gave him like a very dark color scheme with a, like only one flash of color, and then. <laughs> When Summer Emia came out, it was very dorky. I get yeah, it, it it gave him a bit of a dorky vibe, <laughs> especially the PV with the, with the piece with the sage Rogan on these signs. But it was, it was pretty dorky, so it's like, uh, I, I guess I characterized Emia wrong for for Summer, but oh well. <laughs> okay, so this jacket. Is actually, a, I don't think, I don't think anyone noticed it, or if they did, it wasn't important enough. But this is actually a bit of a nod to like Emia Extra, or actually specifically Emia CCC, because uh, of his outfit there. So he had like a red leather jacket there, and that was the entire reason why he's assigned red. I mean, aside from his usual outfit being red in general, but. Um, that jacket was like the main point of his entire outfit and like for for Karna it was like the t-shirt for Arthur it was just like the idol vibe in general for Emia it was just that jacket everything is in like everything else is secondary to that jacket And I also give him like a transparent uh, shirt. Uh, initially, initially Karnas would have been a bit more transparent as well. That's why I, I rendered like his abs and all of that because the intention was it for it to look very wet t-shirt. But when I saw it near Emias, um, I didn't want to reuse the same stylistic choice between the two of them. So I opted the opacity for Karnas and then. Just kept Emia's like semi transparent. The thing is, it's not really visible since I did choose like a dark cloth instead. So it just looks like gray on gray. Uh, if it was white though, it was like too clashing with everything else. So, Since we're just spending Emia's uh, colors and, and shadows and highlights, um, so yeah, I did take a two week, two, not two week, two months break, and I, it's really just I really hit an art block. Like when I was doing the Pokitan Catalyst, I enjoyed that, but I was just not feeling as inspired with everything, anything creative in general, like even editing videos. I couldn't bring myself to do any of it. Like I had two, two to three videos worth of footage with me, and it was mostly character designing, which I do enjoy the most. But I couldn't. Like I felt tired of doing video editing, and I was, I guess, tired of doing creative stuff. And I don't really know what hit me back then. It was probably just like. like of a weird slump out of nowhere, possibly because of quarantine as well. So I'm not as I'm not as exposed to things that could inspire me. So I didn't even do anything for two months. I played games. I mean, I do enjoy my games and stuff. So I played games. Did stuff. I, I'm, I've been exercising, so at least I was kind of productive. I did lose quite a bit, or a little bit of weight during over the quarantine. And I don't know, it's just nothing. And then when I came across this this project, 
I guess because of the deadlines and there's a bit of stake to it in the sense that if I don't finish it, then I won't be in the zine or anything like that. It really jump-started a lot of my creative gears and process. And because I work as a graphic designer for my day job, I'm very used to having deadlines. And the moment I sense a deadline or, or something like that, like certain automatic automated process just start up in my brain so I'm more um, how do I put this motivated to, fin- to finish it and th- that is what I needed actually to 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 get going again because somewhere a little bit before this project uh, I was getting frustrated because I wanted to draw but I for some reason couldn't get myself to draw and I felt like even though I had a ton of ideas to draw, I just wasn't wasn't taking action to do it, which is sad and bad. And the entire reason for this YouTube channel was for that not to happen, but it still happened, I guess. And even video editing, like, I didn't want to touch Premiere, so it was just a slump. And I guess it's fine. I guess I needed it somehow, because now I feel more energetic towards everything. Like, editing this video that you're watching right now, this took a while, like, this took three weeks. Like, the entire piece, it took me three weeks to finish, and, like, that's a lot of footage, and usually that's a pain to edit, but I managed to edit all of it in two days to, to this final form. Even though it is a almost one hour worth video, but, I don't know, I really enjoyed it. I missed it, so... I guess if you really feel like you need a break, take it. But you also need to remember what jump start you back into having a creative process. So for me, it's either deadlines or exposure to the outside world. So in general, mainly I guess partially because I'm an extrovert by nature, I like going out and seeing stuff to be inspired about. So sometimes something as simple as an ad along the highway that would inspire me to like have an idea for a certain drawing. Sometimes it's just like the vibe of wherever I pass through or happen to sit at or stay at. So I guess without that outside interaction of sorts, I just hit a wall. And it's important to know what what inspires you. I guess it's the right term. What inspires you in general. For me, I have a couple of methods, but again, my my most my strongest inspiration is seeing the outside world. And since it's been quarantine and I haven't really left the house for five months, except like there's this one day I had to go out that drained me, I suppose. So yeah, take a break, but remember what inspires you, and then make sure to utilize that. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> but hey, look guys, I did the background. <laughs> like, see, I was so, so into this project. I even make a, made a very decent, but not really very decent. It's not the most amazing background, but I did a background. I put effort into a background. Yay. <laughs> usually when I do backgrounds for digital art, for context, I guess, I'm usually already so tired. And I just want to finish the entire piece by that point. That my backgrounds are usually very lackluster. So because that because the background was so integral to the vibe and how the entire piece will look like for this particular piece, I felt really, really motivated to work on the background to the point that I would go as far as go into Illustrator and make a background there. Because I don't trust myself being able to draw nice symmetrical structures and objects without illustrator and vectors. <laughs> what I did here actually was that I exported the beach background separately, dropped it into illustrator, and then I did the stage area. I see that stage area as a PSD file, which is actually not that easy for illustrator, so if you plan to do that, you might, I don't know, you might need to do a lot, a lot of layer tweaking to 
do it, but I did it anyway. Um, so I save that as a separate PSD file, open that PSD file over in Clip Studio, and then copied and pasted it into the drawing. And then I did my color correction, such as adding like a blue overlay on top of it, like lowering opacity for it, and adding certain glow effects. So that's how I did the stage uh, plus clip studio paint integration. Now I could have done that in Photoshop, but the thing with Photoshop is that it sometimes messes a bit with how it saves back into, or how it reads back into clip studio paint. So you know how your effects work like multiply, overlay, uh, glow, and stuff like that. They don't always translate perfectly into Photoshop. So usually coming from Clip Studio Paint, if I go into Photoshop, do some layer editing there, it looks the same as it would in CSP. But if I attempt to save that PSD in Photoshop and then open it again in Clip Studio Paint, sometimes the layer effects don't really transfer over. Sometimes they become rasterized, sometimes they just stop being layer effects in general. So what I have to do is find some workarounds around that and do my final color correction, like do as much as possible in CSV and then go to Photoshop to do like the final and make sure that I don't export back into Clip Studio. So eh. <laughs> those are some, uh, I guess, issues when you're not using the same systems for certain things. So. I use Adobe for pretty much a lot of things. I'm a graphic designer. I use Adobe systems in general. And since they're the industry standard, um, everyone else does. So when you're using like, outside programs like CSP, a lot of things won't translate very well. Or they, or you'll need to do some tweaking to get back what you were trying to achieve. So I guess that's just something you need to take note of when you're using, sadly, non-Adobe products. So. I know a lot of, there are a lot of programs nowadays that are either free or um, alternatives to Photoshop or the Adobe system because admittedly the Adobe system is stupidly expensive. Like to get everything that the graphic designer needs, you need so much money. Like even if you did the, the monthly subscription thing, like geez, <laughs> that's expensive. And I know that there are alternatives to it, but if you plan to work, like say, in the industry or something like that, you'll need to be careful about how things port over to the Adobe system because it's the Adobe system. <laughs> like, I, I know, I've seen like DaVinci Resolve, Affinity, stuff like that. Like, they're really good and I know a lot of people enjoy using them. But because of how they interact with Adobe, sometimes like, you can't. Or you still have to learn how to use Adobe in general. But yeah. I guess that's that. <laughs> Just keep that in mind when you use other programs. And yeah, I mean, that's not the bash on Adobe. Again, I use it for my job and I'm pretty proficient with like Photoshop and design Illustrator. To some extent, Premiere. Not super for Premiere. I, I know how to video edit, but not make good videos out of it, I guess. But um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know where it's headed with that. Hey, yeah. okay, it's Koo now. So that I'm coloring in Koo, uh, again, I wanted Koo to be a reference that to something else. So Koo's outfit and the reason that he's here in the first place <laughs> is I wanted to have Hawaiian Koo. And Hawaiian Koo is that, that Hawaiian shirt Koo from... Uh, fate hollow attraction, I think. But if you if you ser search Hawaiian Kuhulin or Ko Hawaiian Ku Lancer, you'll see what I mean. But the shirt is pretty uh, pretty unique to Ku. Like I know also he also wears leather pants. There's essentially I drew his I drew that spike more or less. But I wanted to tweak it to look a bit more cooler because like the Hawaiian thing, if you look at it picture it's cool but it's still a Hawaiian pattern-ish not really Hawaiian like tie-dye-ish um, outfit so I wanted to just have it as a strip on his shirt instead 
as an accent instead of like typing the entire shirt. But yeah, I, I live for, <laughs> I live to do certain references like this. <laughs> Originally, actually, in this initial sketch, before I found out it had to be a band, I had uh, Emiya, Arthur, Okita, and then and there's Karna was maybe there, though it could have been switched out for a different character. And the idea initially that I had was to like have them do a Coachella style, like lookbook kind of vibe outfit, like they'd be there in the crowds, looking cool and stuff like that. Then I, again, I did learn that it had to be a band, so I had to change the concept up. And I solidified Karna being there, Arthur was always there, Emiya was always there, and I switched Okita, sadly. I switched Okita for Ku. I mean, Ku's cool. I, I like Ku as, the, as a character in general. He's a cool, real dude character. <laughs> So Ku, actually, I really enjoyed working on Ku's outfit between the the gradient tie-dye Hawaiian shirt thing and the pattern that I did for it. And his pants, like, I was actually kind of nervous working on his pants. I wasn't sure if I would be able to pull off like that shiny leather look. But once I started doing it, I mean, it just came to me naturally. Actually, because I also worked on Emiya's leather jacket first, it already gave me an idea of how I'd go about Ku's pants. I could have improved a little bit in terms of how shiny and sharp the shine should be, but hey, it comes with a scan leather pants, so it still works. So, we are now in the color correction part, which means actually slowly edging towards um, the end of the video. They're still pretty long. Um, basically, I do a lot of other color corrections and edits to, ed to the piece when I'm not recording. Sometimes I just forget to record sometimes. Sometimes the color correction is just so minor that it doesn't warrant recording anymore. So I do add a lot of like some blue rim lights to the character so that, you know, it is a reflection from the ocean and the sky thing. Um, I do add some, like, blue overlays here and there. I edit and tweak, like, how saturated one character is or how shiny one character is. Like, Arthur, in particular, compared to Karna and Emiya and, I guess, Ku. Like, he was so shiny and highlighted compared to everyone else. So, I actually... Like lessened a little bit of his highlight and then added more highlights on Karna and Emiya, which you're kind of seeing it right now. I, I just brush over like a white, tannish, yellowish um, color on them to add more highlight to them. And you know, some other tweaks like uh, between Emiya and Ku, like I separated their colors a little bit. So some little things which are really important to the final piece, but 
um, they're kind of hard to to show on video because it'll just be like multiple layers and stuff like that. <laughs> so again, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really, really enjoyed this piece and it really jump-started a lot of my gears creatively again. Uh, as in everything, like the entire creative stuff that I do is just back. Also, since so many, again, since a lot of artists worked on it, and if you want to see more, because there are a ton of great art there, like, there's a ton of really good art in that uh, fanzine, so I hope you do check it out. Again, the link is in the description and in the comment down below. But yeah, that's it. Pretty much this video. <sighs> It's been a while since I did a voice recording, obviously, so I feel... I mean, it's not that foreign. I, I still feel casual doing it, but I still run out of things to say, and I guess that's nothing surprising when your video is 43 plus plus minutes long. And I forgot to put the end screen. Oh well, I'll do that later. So we are doing some final color corrections, adding some highlights and shadows here and there, some graphic designs to it, while I do all that over there. Um, I hope you just enjoyed this video. Um, I think I said it a while ago already, but if you did, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. I post similar videos, I post fan art, traditional art, watercolor, digital, whatever, whatever comes to mind. Uh, I can't really say regularly. I, I try to post whenever I can, whenever I do something creative. And yeah, I hope you and I hope you enjoy. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or DeviantArt. Uh, I, I also post there every, every now and then. <laughs> I post there the same time I pretty much post on YouTube. So anyway, follow me on those social media if you want to see the final pieces and stuff like that. And I'll see you around there. Thank you.